1981, Warner Brothers released a sequel to a movie few Americans had seen, with a leading man who wasn't yet a star. In fact, they had to pretend this wasn't a sequel at all. Allow me to explain. In 1979, Australian writer-director George Miller and his producing partner Byron Kennedy cooked up a wild idea for a movie called Mad Max. The two men had never made a full-length film before, but their debut feature caused a sensation in Australia, and Mad Max became the biggest box office success in the history of that country. It was also a stepping stone in the budding career of their star, 23-year-old Mel Gibson. Eventually, an American distributor acquired the rights to the now worldwide success Mad Max, but they worried that the heavy Aussie accents would be indecipherable to U.S. moviegoers. So they dubbed the film, including the voice of the American-born Mel Gibson. It didn't work. Mad Max never found much of an audience in this country. When Miller and Kennedy teamed up again two years later and made Mad Max 2, Warner Brothers decided to rename the picture The Road Warrior. After all, why would American audiences pay to see Mad Max 2 if they'd never even heard of Mad Max 1? It turned out to be the right move. The Road Warrior became a smash in the U.S., just as it had been around the world. So what exactly is the appeal of The Road Warrior? Well, I can remember my reaction when I first saw it. For one thing, I could barely sit back in my chair. I can't think of another film that's as constantly moving as this one is. John Ford made history when he staged an Indian attack that lasted 11 minutes in his classic 1939 western, Stagecoach. Well, the tanker chase in this movie runs 13 minutes, and it's just one component of a film that you could call a non-stop chase. I still regard it as a model for action movie making, all the more so because it was done without the digital special effects that dominate so many films today. What you see on screen is, for the most part, real. With all those incredible feats executed by a team of apparently fearless stunt performers. Stunts were performed that had never been attempted before, from a road tanker rolling over at 65 miles per hour, to a biker riding smack into a stationary dune buggy, propelling him a distance of 65 feet. Shot on location in Broken Hill, some 800 miles west of Sydney, Australia, more than 80 vehicles were put to use in The Road Warrior, including one you don't see too often in action films, a gyrocopter. But most importantly, Miller and his writing partner Terry Hayes, working with Brian Hammett, refined the character that introduced in Mad Max by exploring the roots of mythology and the works of Joseph Campbell, just as another filmmaker named George Lucas had done a decade earlier when he was writing Star Wars. It's no accident that Mad Max appealed to audiences around the globe. He has universal qualities as a warrior, a survivor, and ultimately as a champion of the oppressed. You want to get out of here? Talk to me. That's a timeless kind of character you might find in a Western or a samurai film. This one just happens to take place in the future. So sit back, fasten your seatbelt, and enjoy The Road Warrior.